So we're doing another um, Modern Horizons 3 draft. Um, so Spring Garden Antuco is great. It's probably the pick, but like all of these model double face lands have been great. This is one of the better ones too because it's just like a card you'd play anyway and then it's a land. I've liked Vault Storm Angel, especially at the top of the curve for like red, white, and blue, white aggro. Like it ends, it ends a significant number of games when, when things go the way they're supposed to. But, like, the Nantuko spits out insect tokens when it's a creature. And, like, sometimes you play it on turn three. You you know, you pay two and then you play a land and you make an insect. Sometimes you get it later and you bestow it onto something for some value. It is a little harder to actually have the mana to make a copy of something than I expected, like, when I played with it before. But, like, it's still really good. Um, you know, you get the insect either way. Uh, and, yeah, it's very cheap and gives you a ton of value. I mean, it can win games and it's it's two mana, so. Right, neither of these are good and limited. People are excited about them in um, other formats. There was someone in one of the draft video comments who was like, how can he think Sapphire Medallion is bad? It's a free mana rock or, or a two mana mana rock or something, but sort of, uh, but cards that just give you discounts are a lot worse than cards that produce mana on the whole. Um, and this also doesn't produce mana for like all of your things. so. You almost never want to play a card that just gives you a discount in limited because your cards aren't good enough for it to make enough of a difference in most cases. Um, you'd rather have, you know, actual value. <laughs> you know, something like if this were a two mana two two with this effect, that's a whole other thing. And flare of denial, it's okay, but you know, free counter spells, two for winning yourself to counter something or canceling, which are the two options here, aren't that good. I think we're taking signature slam. It's just a really good removal spell um see another jet medallion yeah i mean they are not they are not good so this thing is nuts when you can go off with it and maybe if the previous draft video i posted wasn't a kozilex unsealing deck i would take it here <laughs> but in the interest of having different content um <laughs> i think i'm gonna take the brood scale it is true too that like the brood scale works in like every deck in the format and this just doesn't flat doesn't work if we end up in a different green deck um you know like if we end up in green white, it's useless. For example, uh, it is really really strong. I'd I'd probably take it here if I wasn't worried about content being repetitive, which I think you know matters. And this is a really good card anyway, so we'll see if it wheels. <laughs> okay, stump stump probably the pick here. I these should be pretty much first picks most of the time. The ones that are removal on one side and dual lands on the other. So it's surprising to still see it here. Golden Tail Trainer is pretty good. I'm not a huge fan of it overall. I don't think it's as good. Like, the black-green deck is, I think, better than the green-white one. Um, but, you know, it's okay. Not good enough for me to to want to take it here over a dual land that's also a removal spell, though. So the Necro Bloom is interesting. If I'm interested in content, that one is, <laughs> that one is tempting. Um... It is possible to get the landfall to make some interesting, make more than just zero ones, but it's not easy. And then there's like two really good cards in the pack, and I think we probably take another duel here. Um, you know, this is one that is, it requires a lot more synergy to actually do its thing, but it's still a dual land with upside. And we don't know what our second color is right now, and it's a card we're going to play 100% of the time, more or less. So we will. And Trickster's Elk is good, but yeah, I think we take strength of the harvest instead i would take you know one of the uh the green white signpost in common if we saw another one especially now um i just didn't want to take it you know in that particular pack so like how our mana looks five picks in though we don't know what our second color is and we've got three three green cards that you love to have in your deck so i'm pretty happy about that okay so that's interesting. Marionette Apprentice is really strong, and I think probably going to be our pick here. It's a little awkward that, you know, neither of these fixes for black, but that's okay, because if we're a base black green deck, for example, um, we can still use those to fix, so we can still cast them even. So, so yeah, I think we take the Apprentice. Uh, whichever mode you choose, it's really good. It's definitely better in black red, where you're artifacting, you know. We're not going to be doing a lot of that, probably, but it's still an efficient card. No matter how you slice it so it's what we're going to take okay so we've got some fixing here it doesn't you know if we end up in black green it might help us splash a red card like stump stump 
Um, I haven't seen or played with Lion Umbra yet. I think it's probably okay when you get the right deck going, but I'm not hugely confident about it working out that often. Um, Expel the Unworthy is a pretty good removal spell. We've also got a Scurrilous Sentry, which is a good card uh, for in general. I think it's probably what we take. I think Expel is probably a little bit better. But given that we already have a black card, I think I think this comes out on top. Um, so Dream Drinker Vampire is a nice little two drop. I did have a deck that I wish I had recorded where I had two Toxic Deluges and four of these. And like the whole deck was like about Toxic Deluge early and then gaining back all the life with <laughs> Dream Drinker Vampires. It only went like five and three, but uh, yeah, I didn't record it, unfortunately. I think it is what we take here. I like it more than the Marauder overall. And if we're going to be black green, our theme is supposed to be counters, right? So there you go. Uh, yeah, probably take the decent removal spell. This is more fixing, but right now, like, we already have a bit of it that we don't even really need. So I'm just going to take the removal spell here. Seems like we're going to be black green, but I can't say for certain. So this is an interesting pick. So this is maybe... This is not a very good one of these, but it's still a creature on one side and, like, a land on the other. It's not as synergistic as the Sentry, but it's also cheaper. Um, I think I'd probably go ahead and take it. And it's another land we don't, you know, that we can cut from our deck effectively, which definitely matters. Yeah, um... I'm going to take Utter Insignificance on the off chance we somehow shift into blue. Like, I don't think either of these are particular. I mean, I think Jet Medallion's unplayable and the Levy's pretty close, so. Don't hate a late Grave Dig, though. That's for sure. Four mana for a 2-2 two -two and a card back from our graveyard to our hand is pretty good. And if you have to run it out on turn two, there are worse, there are worse things. Does seem like green dried up on us significantly, and that could end up being a problem. Well, okay. <laughs> we might play the Necrobloom. Uh, Strength of the Harvest does help us, and it wield. And, you know, I think it's I think it's an interesting card. So, Imskir Iron Eater is really good. It kind of makes me wish I'd gone, like, black-red. Um, but that you basically have to be black-red. It's not one you're going to splash or anything, so I don't think it's what we take here. Um, yeah, I like the Hunger Tide Rises, but I think the Brood Scale and the Repurposer are probably just better. You know, even if we're not ramping that much, these are both just good cards on rate alone. So, yeah. Right now, we're already up to, like, five lands with different names, so... <laughs> anyway, um... Yeah, I think we'll take a Brood Scale over... I think if I were in blue-green, I'd take the Repurposer over the Brood Scale. But since we're in a counter deck, and we're likely to get this trigger more than once, I think uh, I think I'd rather go with the Brood Scale. So this is an interesting splash for black-white. The only awkward thing is you really do want to be able to cast Throw a Line like whenever you want. And so trying to splash it isn't something I love. Um... I don't think Dross Claw is very good, or the Gargantua, or Eviscerator's Insight. None of them have been that impressive. So it probably is just what we take, and if we get enough fixing, we'll play it. And if we don't, we won't. Um, yeah, Angel of the Ruins is nice. I don't like this trick very much. Uh, I talked about why in the set review, and it's continued to feel that way to me. Basically, it doesn't help your creature that much in combat. It doesn't help your creature survive, in particular. And secondarily uh it's not even that good um and it's not good against removal either so we do have another land with a different name that's good with landfall <laughs> so we could force the necrobloom thing here and take a windswept teeth uh and it's not a crazy pick because this pack you know i like the marauder okay i don't really desperately want a second grave dig and i like the elk but the 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 heath does make our mana a lot better for necrobloom and that seems like fun to me so let's do it Okay, ooh, yeah, okay. So Expanding Ooze is definitely what we want here. Um, you know, we've already got one of these, and it's just, a, you know, it's just a decent removal spell and not much else. 
this is like great with all our counter stuff. You know, if we put counters on our brood scale, we get more zero ones, so on and so forth. So yeah. We have a mythic in one of our colors here, but it's pretty bad and limited. It's just you, you use up a card and you never really get a full card of value back. And it's just, it's not very good. Bridgeworks Battle, however, is. It also gives us another land with a different name. So, you know, if we, no matter how this deck does, if we can just get one, two, two black zombie out of, uh, <laughs> out of our Necro Bloom, then, uh, then it'll feel like we did it, right? But yeah, we definitely take the battle. I mean, it's what I would take anyway, even if I didn't have Necro Bloom. So here's the Energy Allurin. Not very good in Limited. Um, has some potential. You know, there actually is, I guess, a combo in this format because you have the one white mana, one two, who makes an energy when a creature enters the battlefield. So if you could end up with some sort of blink, some other thing to blink, you could go off. But anyway, uh, I just thought about that. But I think we take the Marauder now. We've passed a bunch of them, and it's fine. I like it more than Foul Strike. Okay. Um... I think Oozwag is probably going to be better for our deck than Sylvan Safekeeper. We do have a bunch of lands we could just be grabbing, but we don't want to completely destroy our mana base. And we're doing okay on lands anyway, and this doesn't help us with mana at all. Like, if I get the one that is exactly Abzan, then sure, I'm going to be all over that. But we'll just take the Oozwag here. Yeah, neither of these are great for us. We do have another Accursed Marauder. They're not that exciting, though. Blue, black, red, and blue, green, red. Nope, that doesn't really help us. Could try to play a, a Brea, too. No, I'm just kidding. We'll, we'll take another Marauder. Yeah, well, I'll take the Hungry Tide Rises. Yeah, it's better for us than Kami is. And, uh... Yeah, not too surprising all three of these wield. Um... I guess the Gargantua, it's just been too clunky in the format this powerful. Like a five mana four four is just not very good. And I don't think either of these are very good either. But for us, this is probably the best. Uh, I don't really want another Grave Dig or another Accursed Marauder, but I guess I'll take another Grave Dig. Don't really want these either. Um, they're okay. I mean, the, the Transmigrant's not terrible, I guess. And there's another Dross Claw. Okay, so a horrific assault is pretty hard to say no to. It is less good in our deck because we're less, well, we have a decent number of Eldrazi. I like the Apprentice a lot, but horrific assault's probably better when you don't have an artifact deck. And we don't. We could have had two Kozilek's unsealing, though. But yeah, we'll take an assault here. Really good artifact payoff, not really for us. Um, I do like Writhing Chrysalis a lot, and it's not completely out of the question that we try to splash it. We do have Shattered Landscape here, which does actually help us with our mana. I don't know how much I want another Sentry. I mean, I like the card. Oh, there's an Evolution Witness, though. Yeah, I'm just supposed to take that. Yep. So another Brood Scale. We have another land that could be useful for us. A couple of them, actually. I guess, yeah, this is the one that's the most useful. Another Sentry, Buried Alive, is pretty much useless. I do think we'll take a land here. Because we're trying to play the Knot Master and Necro Bloom. And uh, this will help us do that. How many lands of different names do we have now? We have two, three, four, five, six. And that's without basics. So <laughs> so we might make a zombie at some point. It's not, it's not impossible. It'd be easier if we picked up some of the land tutors like the Eldrazi, the four mana three three that can grab any land. Overall, I think our deck's looking pretty good in terms of curve and stuff like that. Oh, I just really messed everything up by doing that. There we go. Um, we got another Evolution Witness, which I definitely like more than Fetid Gargantua. Not a fan of the False Gods. I like Sentry, but I do think the Witness is better. Um, yeah. Especially when we have other ways to put counters on things, and, and we do. Okay, so Glasswing Grace is a really good duel that helps us with what we're trying to do. And I would probably... Well, I guess if I wasn't splashing white, I'd maybe not take it, but I'd probably still take it. Like, they're just so good. Um... 
Yeah, this is a land that I wouldn't hate, but I'd much rather have this, since it's not always a land, you know? Creation of Avacyn is bad. This is a land that can help us. I don't really want a Gargantua, so I think we're on to another land here. Okay, I think I'd rather have another Dream Drinker Vampire than a Scurrilous Sentry. If we're going to try to do silly things with Necro Bloom, we probably need to be gaining some life, you know? But yeah, we also have the Nantuko, by the way. You know, we have two rare, powerful landfall triggers that can make tokens. Um, so these are extra good, all three of these, these fetches. So that's nice. All right, we passed the Trickster's Elk, and I was kind of sad about it, but we'll pick one up here. Um, Terramander's not really for our deck, and the Insight isn't really for us either. All right, we do get a free Marionette Apprentice, which I'm pretty happy about. The Unicorn's good. Seems like Black White might have been the most open. Like, all three of these are really nice, um, nice cards. Okay, I kind of don't think we're going to play a Transmigrant. I mean, they're okay, and they're kind of funny as Mana Sinks late because you can just keep bringing them back, but... Well, now I kind of wish I'd gone the other route because I'm definitely not playing three Scurrilous Sentries. <laughs> or four. Or three Accursed Marauders. Or the Creation of Avacyn. Seems like there's a lot of bad black cards in this set. This this particular draft made me realize that because we saw all these Dross Claws and things um all right so we only really need to run one planes we don't need to we don't need to go harder than that question is beyond that what do we cut because we have one two we've got four five double-faced lands one two of them is it just two that produce green three of them produce green so I feel pretty comfortable going down at least two forests. And then we have two, three that produce, uh, is it just two that produce black? I guess it is. Yeah. Go down at least one swamp. So that leaves us at 10, 11, 12, 13, like real lands. Question is whether I want to do this. Um, Sometimes it's not the best idea ever, especially when we're trying to landfall. Um, I mean, that does basically give us 18 lands still. And we have lots of green sources, which is probably... Well, our, having early black is pretty important for us too, isn't it? But, yeah, I mean, we're going to be able to get it. So I think this is probably our mana base. I could go even lower, but I'm starting to get a little low on colored mana symbols and stuff. So we probably cut like the Transmigrant, maybe, maybe a Marauder. I don't know. It doesn't really do the synergy thing our deck wants us to do. It's just like a random two drop and all of our other two drops are like either more powerful or more synergistic. So yeah, we'll go down to one Marauder. All right. Well, let's see if we can Necro Bloom. So unfortunately, I never hit record for this game. It's still our first game. Uh, we've been kind of lucky not to... Yeah, that's bad. Very bad. Um, we've been kind of lucky that they haven't drawn a really scary Eldrazi, and we've just made making a bunch of plant tokens and blocking Drown Yard Lurker for a while. Looks like our opponent's had enough of that now, though. Uh, cause, yeah, they just use Amphibian Downpour to really mess us up. I can get one of them back with Grave Dig. And if I'm going to do that, oh, I should have, the not recording thing uh, threw me for a loop. I should have used this in response, but, you know, I did not. So let's block with, I think, Necro Bloom. 
So the marionette apprentice has been bleeding them very, very slowly <laughs> with all of our tokens. So it's been kind of funny. Aha! See, I've, I've been waiting to see one of those and hadn't yet. And that probably means we lose... Yeah, he didn't miss much in this game other than me hoping they weren't going to draw something like this for a while because we just haven't been able to ever attack, really. Um, God, I hate Breaker of Creation. It is kind of funny alongside Amphibian Down 4 because, like, I don't really care if, <laughs> if I sack those. It's only Annihilator 2, right? Yeah, so we might be okay. So I think we're supposed to play the Witness here, mostly because I can use it to block Breaker of Creation and kill it, uh, and then I'll sack these two to the, well, it's probably better to sack a plant and an insect, actually. These are marginally better. All right, so past the blockers, you're gonna block there. You're gonna block here, and I think we're gonna take seven. I imagine they have a trick or something, I don't know. One would think. And I think we get back our Necro Bloom. The Accursed Marauder doesn't really do enough, I don't think, and Necro Bloom is like <laughs> the only way we have a shot at winning this game, I think. This Marionette Apprentice is pretty good with our Necro Bloom. Like, that whole plan has <laughs> kind of worked. I mean, obviously our opponent just gained a thousand life, but, you know. Oh, God. That means they can get back that Breaker of Creation. Which is not, not what I was hoping for. Yeah, I think we're going to lose to... The Breaker of Creation nonsense. Pretty hard not to. I mean, <laughs> Necrobloom is just completely outclassed. So they're going to go up to like 31 and uh, yeah, I'll have to get annihilated again, which <laughs> we do have like enough resources that, especially if I draw a land, I could choose to dredge to get two landfalls because Necrobloom does let us dredge. Um, if I really had to get the two bodies, but the problem is I need to be able to block and kill uh, the breaker. Hopefully this doesn't happen to us every game, but that is a risk that we are uh, dealing with. Um, uh as a result of um, having kind of a slow deck, but not a slow deck that's doing as powerful of a thing as Eldrazi are. I don't think we dredge. I think we hope we draw something better than double landfall triggers. Eh. <laughs> I don't think we did it. Um... So I could Grave Dig and grab the Accursed Marauder here and play it. Then I have two, two, two bodies that I can use to block that, and I'll give up some lands to Annihilator. That might be our best bet. I mean, we still have another 7-7 seven, seven to worry about, but, you know. All right. I could just play Dream Drinker Vampire 2. It's fun how they uh, how hexproof of each color looks. Well, you know, I didn't think this through very well because I have to sack the Marauder. 
Um, yeah, Dream Drinker probably was a better play. Because, yeah, I was somehow thinking only they had to lose something, but that was dumb. The Dream Drinker could actually, like, block alongside the, the this. I think we're pretty much dead. As soon as they brought Breaker of Creation back a second time, I think our chances, uh... Diminished. Not attacking with the seven? Man, yeah, I was going to say, I guess they didn't mean to do it that way. Ugh. Yeah, so I guess we block like this and take four. They do only get to kill the Necro Bloom, but, you know. You know, against someone who's not gaining a million life, making plants and blocking with Marionette Apprentice in play might actually be a viable strategy, but not so much. Yeah, if they get the Breaker back again here, I think we just scoop. I mean, we're pretty close to scooping anyway, but then we'd really be there. All right, I need a better draw than that, but at least it's, like, big, I guess. <laughs> At least it's sort of big. Yeah, we've got four permanents annihilated and they gained like 20 life, so. It's tough. Yeah, if they just put another counter on the witness, they can just get the breaker back again. <laughs> okay. I'm a little surprised that they feel like they even need to draw cards, especially, like, on their turn. So I probably chump the Lurker and block the Witness. It's probably the best option we've got. I could triple block the Lurker. It would die, and I'd be left with probably the 1 2 or with the 2 2. And then I'm looking down some much smaller creatures. I mean, they, they might still be enough to kill me, especially because I'm going to be at 4. But if I draw land, I can play both of these, and they can, like, trade for all this stuff. So, yeah. I think we just go for the triple block here and take 4. Especially because we get to hold on to a creature. I'm guessing they kill the apprentice. Yeah, they've had enough of it. <laughs> they've had enough of it bleeding them out. Uh, they're at such high life it doesn't matter, but it has done like 10 or 11 to them over the course of the game. Okay, okay. I only have one green mana right now, so I think that means we run out the brood scale and the dream drinker. So let's just hope they brick on all their draws and there's like a knot. There's more than... There's an okay chance we could find our way out of this. Uh, they do have a loot. And another card draw. Never mind. We're screwed. <laughs> they, they have, uh, you know, the, the ability to just keep drawing cards. And they're going to draw another Breaker of Creation. or You know, even this was a huge problem this game. It is sort of amazing. I mean, and it is because the only reason we stayed in the game was all of Necrobloom's plant tokens. I wonder if I should have just gone all in and tried to dredge up lands. <laughs> Not try, just dredge them up and keep getting like two plants a turn. That's not so good. Because I have to block this. I, um, yeah. All I have are ugly blocks. Although if they only attack with the witness, it's less bad. I think. Yeah. But yeah, I guess we'll double block it. I don't think there's anything we can draw that's going to keep us from dying at two here. Especially because it looks like they have a trick or something. Yeah. We were never really in that game. 
um, unfortunately for us. But maybe we can do it. You know, I, I think a better matchup for us might be aggro decks. But I'm a little worried they'll run us over too quickly. I mean, this deck has fast starts in it. We certainly didn't have one in that game, but... It's not like the curve is completely terrible, but obviously if we're trying to do stuff with Bloom, uh, what's a who's it, that's, you know, pretty slow. So the only creature we have is black. We do have, you know, we have more lands than it looks like we do, but we don't have any black mana. But like... It's an okay hand, and there's a decent chance I draw black, and the Hunger Tide Rises should give us some, some action. It's definitely not a great hand, but I think it's keepable. We do kind of need... I mean, if we can get black mana, Signature Slam on Dream Drinker is going to gain us some life. <laughs> Nether Goyf. Okay. Well, another black card isn't exactly what I was hoping for. Probably going to have to play Bridgeworks Battle tapped here. Yeah, so the Goyf will hit us for one now. Yep, then we'll play Bridgeworks Battle. You know, this does set things up uh, later for our Bloom whatever. <laughs> Okay, I'm very happy we drew black mana here. Um, we've got some options. I could make this a 2-3 and just kill Nethergoyf here with Horrific Assault. I could also just play the Hunger Tide Rises, though, and I think that's actually pretty good. I mean, it blocks the, the worm, the worm, the germ pretty well, so... Yeah, so I'm pretty happy to hold back those attackers. Really could have used a breathe your last in that last game. Um, so I guess it's sentry time. Okay. Maybe I'm supposed to discard Dream Drinker. I think we want this to grab another black. And as nice as the Dream Drinker is, I think it's the worst of our cards in hand. So, yeah. We'll discard Dream Drinker. A 3-4 is pretty big on this board, too, so... Well, I do think we discard the Landscape now. You're an instant, yeah. So I think I go for an attack here with Scurrilous Sentry. This does give us more black mana, potentially. It might just be the Witness, as good as it is. Like, it's not going to do anything in this particular game. I think another land is pretty important here, and we hold on to three... I mean, we do have three removal spells, one of which we'll... Yeah, we'll be able to cast it next turn, so yeah. Let's go that route. So if they try to, like... Yeah, I was gonna say, I have Signature Slam, so if they tried really hard to block it, I would kind of be in business, but... Well, here's another land with a different name. We could, you know, hold on to this and try to win with it, because, like, sticking it on the sentry would be pretty spicy, but... We kind of need the mana. So, is 2-3 significantly better than 1-2 in a servo right now? I mean, it's better against Nethergoyf, that's for sure. Yeah, we'll make it a 2-3. I could Horrific Assault something here, but it doesn't really seem worth it to me. does make Signature Slam better if we have more modified creatures, too, because 
We can take down huge creatures now. Well, I'm very glad I got this up to five power now. I'll tell you that much. I'm not planning on using chapter four here. So, like, yeah, I mean, I definitely am more willing to give up the bodies here than, than the other things. Like, yeah, I'm definitely going to block you, and I'm going to block this. Well, I guess we're going to attack them here. Uh, you know, they're going to take the time to equip this, and I think we'll just kill whatever they try to equip it to. Now, the Goyf did get a lot bigger, but I'm not too worried about that. In fact, if I put another counter on this, I'll probably just horrific assault Nether Goyf. That's a hard choice. Um, gives us yet another removal spell. I probably do discard Stump Stomp. It's not as good, I don't think, as Horrific Assault or Signature Slam or Breathe Your Last in this particular situation. And getting this to five is a big deal because I can pay one to kill the Nether Goyf with Horrific Assault. So, yeah. And that is what we'll do. So we have six lands with different names. <laughs> we haven't played a duplicate land so far. So yeah, if their plan here is to equip the familiar... Does not look like it is. Um, I honestly think we hold on to this just because of Necrobloom and, and to the lesser extent the Nantuko with a landfall trigger. All right, so let's attack. Can actually it's just attack with both with no problem. We're going to discard a land this time. It's been a while since we've wanted to discard a land. <laughs> Wait, what? I don't understand. Why would you double block? Oh, it has menace, that's why. <laughs> oh, my brain. Um, all right, so yeah, we'll play Dream Drinker here. So this opponent has been mana screwed. Um, you know, things that have been firing in all cylinders to some extent, but they were stuck on two lands the whole game. So I wouldn't say that's a good reflection of how actually good our deck can be. You did see how good those modal double face lands are, though. I mean, being able to, uh... play those cards as lands early was pretty important in us not getting completely destroyed. At some point, it might be worth tutoring up Necrobloom with the Hunger Tide Rises. <laughs> I don't think we're at that point, but, like, if we have the requisite number of lands in play, I think it's probably worth doing. Okay, we've got a hand that will be able to play our Necrobloom, and we've got a 2-drop and a 3-drop, which is really good. So far, our hands haven't been so good for the early game, but we do have it this time. I'll have to grab a Swamp with Foreboding Landscape, uh, but that's okay. I do like this sentry, you know, it performs pretty darn well. It's kind of, Connive was just such a good mechanic in uh, Capenna. Like, basically every card with it was good. <laughs> it's kind of like Explore, like that, like, you know, if you Connive. And the fact that this is a common that does it on ETB and attacks is just crazy, like, just crazy, yeah. So we have options for two drops now. 
we will grab ourselves a swamp. Um. Ugh. That's not what you want to see. Um. The brood scale can help us get the necrobloom into play, even if I miss a land drop. So I think it's probably what I play here. But yeah, turn two fanatic of Ronus is not not ideal, <laughs> especially when we don't have removal for it. Mana, 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 mana. Well, at least they didn't play something with four power. Okay. Now, we have hit that land drop. We'll probably end up playing the sentry next turn, too. Oh, yeah, we, just, we should play the witness. I guess I could have attacked with the Brood Scale and if they blocked Buffett to kill the Eldrazi, but yeah, I don't think don't think that's what we want to do. Um So yeah, I mean another deck like the first one that crushed us, uh, another deck that's um Got the ability to ramp into huge Eldrazi is not a great matchup for us. I mean, you know, we can get the Necrobloom out there and <laughs> block it indefinitely. But if it's one of the Annihilator ones, not so much. So, so yeah, I can get the landscape back, which is not terrible for Necrobloom stuff. Um, Probably just play, yeah, just the Sentry this turn. I could play both Dream Drinkers. I guess there's a world where that's better for us than the alternative. They do only have one color of mana, but they could fix that if they wanted to. And the fact they're holding on to a colorless land probably means they have some colorless Eldrazi. Um, I would assume. As soon as they play something with four power, that's when things are really going to get out of hand. This deck definitely needed more removal to be this dirtily. I mean, we have like four removal spells. All right, yeah, so now they have four power, <laughs> which is the thing that I didn't want them to have. We'll take four. So now they can produce five mana right now. <laughs> Six, actually. Surprisingly, they can't do anything with it. I didn't think that was going to happen. Okay. So I've got some interesting choices here now. I could adapt and then cast Not Masters um, thing, and then I have two zero ones in play on top of a four four. Yeah, that's probably what I do. Hopefully, they don't have another signature slam to wreck us at instant speed, huh? Yes, please. Hmm. No, yeah, we want to put them both here. Oop. Almost clicked decline. <laughs> Still don't like our position very much. You know, as sweet as that turn was. Yeah, they've definitely got some colorless. You, you can't really run this unless you actually actively need colorless. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I would assume they have it. Okay. 
Well, they almost certainly have a trick or something, but I say this just moves a counter. Yeah. I say we uh, make them play it. Or they just wanted another spawn. But now they don't have four mana from the Fnatic, so... Ah, I see. Okay. Well, I can live with that. I can live with all of that. It was a two-for-one, more or less. They were that worried about our Brute Scale, I guess. All right. It's Necrobloom time. So we go... Necrobloom. <laughs> we're going to have a lot of zero-one tokens, that's for sure. So we need to find more lands with different names. We've got them. Most of them are still in our deck. Yeah, that's not fun. Um, they are out of juice. We can't really pressure them right now, so it's not that exciting. It is kind of funny that the Necrobloom can actually attack right now. Because they can only do five. <laughs> it just has so much toughness that... Uh, we will just draw. At some point, it might make sense to dredge, but I don't think we're there yet. I think I'm going to attack with Necroblue. <laughs> oh, no, I'm not. They can just block with their 1-4. Yeah. I could kill the 1-4, but I have a feeling there's going to be something I need to kill more at some point. I think we play our Sentry here and probably try to get a counter on it for our Not Master. This deck would have been so much better if we just had a couple of Propagator Drones, because we're just making so many tokens that it's kind of insane. Even the... There's that random 1-3 on the bonus sheet that likes it when tokens die. That would have been pretty cool in this deck, too. Uh, now we're going to draw... Yeah, I think we discard a Dream Drinker. Then I think we play the other Dream Drinker. So the Skirless Sentry is going to start being able to attack, in theory, in the near future. Them whiffing on their draw there is... Pretty good news for us. I think I may grow this. I may adapt it and then attack with both of these. Could adapt it and play the Not Master and attack with both. That might be better, actually. Okay, well, that makes things even easier, I think. Um... Yeah, so... We're still going to go ahead and adapt here. So Signature Slam lets us kill any of these things. Is it worth attacking with the Bloom too? Two, three, four. They still don't have what they need to kill it. And if they want to block these two menace creatures, like, it's going to be hard for them to do it. It's probably, I mean, it's such a good defensive card. I'm probably not supposed to, though. I think we discard a land if we draw one. Yeah. Yeah, land's fine. Since we can use our either Breather Last or Signature Slam to really mess them up. And if they just don't block, then we just play our Not Master here. So. Good chance they don't block, I think, just because they have so much life right now.
So now we can be a lot more aggressive, especially if they brick on their draw again, which would be nice. Okay, they must have. <laughs> so we won a game where opponent got mana screwed. We won a game where opponent got flooded. I mean, that game was... Our opponent was more capable of actually defending themselves in that game than they were in the other. We made a bunch of tokens. Yeah, I mean, there aren't very many decks where that 3-mana 1-3 on the bonus sheet that drains the opponent 1 every time a token dies. There aren't that many decks in the format that make sense for it, but this one does. <laughs> Lots of scions and plants. Okay. Seems all right. Might just play the Marauder on turn 2 to kill their 3-drop. I mean, if they play something else, it's not going to work that way, obviously. They'll they'll lose a two-drop, probably, but that's... Yeah, i probably just run it out here. Oh, yeah, now I definitely do, because freaking Propagator Drone is insane. So, goodbye, Propagator Drone. So, Expanding Ooze this turn, probably? Yeah, it lets us be most... It's the most aggressive play, I think. Um, I could play the Hunger Tide Rises since we're not under any pressure and we could start making some bodies, but I think I like the Ooze a little more. The Ooze is also great with Evolution Witness, so getting that going is seems like a good plan. Alright, so let's attack. Looks like our opponent's having some problems again. We'll play Evolution Witness here. I don't have the mana for Necrobloom this time, but that's okay. Alright, so what we're going to do here... We only have one permanent in our grave. Oh, I can get it back immediately. <laughs> oh my god. So what we're going to do here is play... Get back a Cursed Marauder, play a Cursed Marauder, then put another counter on the Witness and get the Marauder back. That doesn't seem insane at all. So, we play the Marauder. We attack. This puts a counter there. We get the Marauder back. <laughs> okay, well that's, that's just wrong. Our opponent has to play more than one creature or they're just dead. Uh, and <laughs> pretty messed up. That's pretty messed up. Well, now they can take away our Accursed Marauder, but I also have a regular removal spell in my hand, so they're probably dead. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. That was definitely the most legit game so far in terms of how the deck performed. It just these creatures, these adapt creatures that do stuff when you put counters on them, like when you can get them going. When you can trigger them once, they're all pretty good, and when you trigger them more than that, it's just like impossible for your opponent. Especially that whole accursed marauder combo where they had like no board because we played it on two, and then we got it back, killed their one creature, then put a counter on the witness, then got it back. <laughs> And even playing Thought Knots here wasn't going to, you know, that's from the, that's a special guest, a super powerful card. But, you know, I had the Marauder plus a removal spell in my hand, so they didn't really have a way out. The Necro Bloom has been our friend. Why does our opponent always get to go first? What's that about? Um, it's a slow hand, especially when we're not going first. Elking something on two is unlikely to be worthwhile. Um, but I do have a three drop and a four drop. But I'm probably supposed to mulligan. Yeah, this is better. We don't have black mana, of course. But other than that, it's okay. And, uh, yeah. I think I probably send back the Dream Drinker. The hand is pretty good just using all these green cards. So... You know, I've got a two drop without the vampire's help, so 
I don't want to play Bridgeworks Battle if I can help it. I mean, I will if if uh, if I have to. Yeah, that thing is annoying. All right, well, I do think we need to play out the Brood Scale so we can cast one of our fight spells on the Slith next turn or, or on something else they might play. Yeah, that's gross. So, gets first strike. Hits me, goes to three, gains lifelink. Right, there's a windswept heat. Doesn't help us get black, but... So I think we just Bridgeworks battle the Envoy and attack them. The alternative option is that I put a counter on the Brood Scale. Man, that's not really... That's not worth it. Um... Yeah, so let's play our Heath here. And we'll sacrifice it and grab a forest. Then we will Bridgeworks battle. And attack them for four. We need to keep a creature in play pretty badly right now because of the whole uh, situation. Well, that's going to hit me pretty hard this turn, but I'm not too upset about it in the long run. Okay. Well, what do I want to do? How do I want to do this? Because I could try Signature Slam. The thing that worries me is that they could have... Um, interaction. Like, they have two cards in their hand. But there's, like, a pretty reasonable chance they have interaction here. In which case, I think buffing this and using Stump Stomp is probably better than Signature Slam. Buffing it with its own ability, that is. Um, yeah. I do still have mana up for Signature Slam. Yeah, they do have... They do have removal. And that is very bad because all the cards in our hand are, like, all about um, having a creature in play. I guess if I draw a land... No, that's not really going to work. I'll take another big hit here in the meantime. So, you know, I wasn't worried about it, but then, like, <laughs> things have gone the way they've gone, so. So I have to block it this turn. I don't really have a choice, which is a very big problem. Yeah, I don't see this going very well. It's going to get up to 8-5 next turn. <laughs> I mean, if you can stick a slith and uh, your opponent just can't just can't stop it, like that's that's this can happen. So all they need is removal and we lose and we might lose anyway. Oh, yeah. We do lose anyway. Is their deck just, like, all in on Hex Gold Slith? Do they have, like, eight of them or something? <laughs> I mean, it's a pretty good card. I wouldn't, you know, don't expect it to do what it did in this game all the time. I also don't think Inventor's Axe is very good. But, uh, you know, when things go the right way with a Slith that's buffed like that, it is, it is bad news. It is bad news. All right, so no black mana. And green isn't really going to be enough. We've had to mulligan almost every time. I mean, our mana is not amazing, but I don't feel like we should have had to mulligan as much as we did. Okay, this one is fine. Grab a swamp with that in this case. Probably put Oozwag back. So 
So I don't think we're going to grab it yet, because on the off chance, yeah. Yeah. On the off chance we draw black naturally, getting white with that would be way better. Um, and I can still play the Brood Scale next turn. Okay. Now we'll probably just play the Elk on the following turn. Hey, look who it is. Hey, we did draw black naturally. Um, is he worth turning into a 3-3? Three, three? Because <laughs> there's like, there's a not insignificant chance that they flip him here. And if they flip him here, it's pretty much game over. I think it's close anyway. Well, maybe not. It is likely that they flip him and then kill our brood scale. Although if I buff the brood scale, they can't even kill it. Yeah, that's true. Um, all right, let's attack him. Yeah, I think we'll just play our Elk. It's also too big. Well, I didn't adapt. So they can kill the Brood Scale, but it wouldn't be the end of the world if they did now. So We're just going to play a 3-3. Sets up our Horrific Assault a lot more effectively. I guess if they, like, kill our elk here with a spell, flip a coin, transform Raul, and kill our brood scale, that is very bad. All right, he did not transform on that coin flip. That's good news. Okay. So let's attack with both of these. I am worried about trying to horrific assault here. Just a little, but I think we go for it. Thank goodness that worked. Um, then we'll play this Apprentice. I think we just want a 2-3 here. We're going to grab white with this finally. Then maybe we'll just top deck our uh, plant token maker. Although right now, <laughs> right now we'd rather just have more beat down than, than a card that gets our shields up. Well, they're going to do something at instant speed, I think it's safe to say. They don't have five mana for the draw three, which I think is good news for us. Well, I can definitely live with that. Why is that a May trigger? What's that about? Elking our, the spawn is kind of funny, but well, maybe it's just what I should have done. Hmm. Probably should have. It kind of has the same outcome because it's not like the zero one's going to do anything and then it would just be the elk that isn't exactly doing anything. Yeah, so this can... No, I can't quite generate a two for one unless they also cast a spell. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's pretty gross. Okay. They can't really attack us, but that's going to be a problem at some point. I think it might be worth an attack here. Since we have our witness. Yeah. Can't block. Is that really your plan? You've got one blue mana. I think I can just sack this token to do lethal here. Well, they gave us an easy way out of that one. <laughs> I I knew there was a possibility that that would happen, but I didn't. I, they overlooked it, most cards these days. Say non-token, but uh, that marionette does not. It's perfectly happy for you to sack a token to do one damage. So they kind of had to block one of the threes. And if they'd done that, I would have just gotten it back. So, you know, it was a problem for them either way, I guess. But they would have had another draw at least. Okay, we haven't seen our Nantuko uh, yet. So, I mean, I do think we keep this. The lack of white, you know, both our white cards in our hand with no white mana is a little annoying. But... I think it's probably okay in the end. And we'll get white, you know. Unless our opponent completely runs us over or something. That's not going to happen, though, is it? He says as they play a one drop. I'm kind of thinking about just making a 2-2 two -two with this so I can play Nantuko next turn and get an Insect. Yeah, I think that's fine. I've seen so many Party Thrashers in this format, <laughs> and I'm not really sure why. Um, well, let's attack. There are a lot of tricks I could have, but they're gonna they're gonna block it anyway, which is kind of unfortunate for us. But I do think we just play this the regular way. Um, hmm. Do we? Then I can start making zombie tokens for two mana, like next turn. But it's probably just gonna be better next turn to play like the Oozwag. So yeah, I think we just play the Nentuko the normal way here. And then play a land. They chose not to discard? It's almost never the right decision. Almost never. Because, like, you get selection of two cards. The idea is you give up, you, you discard something that's like medium. Or not useful at the specific time. And then you get a choice between two cards. And on average, that choice is going to be better. Oh my god, there's Lelia. <laughs> That's not good. Why isn't the 1-1 flyer who can't block attacking us? There we go. Oh god. And they hit a refurbished familiar while they were at it. Okay... You kind of think we need to play the Oozwag because it gives us something that can actually block Lelia. Um, it's tempting to play the Trawler as a land here and stuff, but yeah, I don't think we can. So I think we try to block Lelia. Um, oh yeah, they couldn't actually... They only have until the end of the turn 
So luckily they didn't get to play the familiar. Yeah, discarding a charge bug and God hitting freaking <laughs> a wither and bloom, which now makes our lives exceedingly difficult. Also, it works with this. Oh, technically isn't put into exile from your library because you look at them or whatever. All right, well, we've got to kill Lelia. Yeah, just to be safe, like if they have one red mana burn spell, yeah. Uh-oh. Wait, what? They had the mana for that? Oh. Convoke. Yeah, I messed. That's, that's going to be hard to come back from. <laughs> not that, I mean, not blocking also would have been hard to come back from. I was thinking one of these was in their graveyard somehow. It does show them in the same, anyway, that was, that was not good. Uh, well, Lelia is going to destroy us, as she often does. <laughs> that just made Lelia even bigger. <laughs> why is Lelia so good? And why do they have Party Thrasher and Lelia? Yeah, yep, 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 yep. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, I think we're dead, more or less. <laughs> Man. I guess we're going to take three here, chump block her. We do have removal that can deal with her, but she's given them so much value already, and I made that really stupid block. Like, if my Oozwag wasn't dead, things would be a lot better. How far are they from buffing this? Not very. Well, I guess I get rid of something. Kind of don't think it's enough. <laughs> oh boy i mean i think we're kind of lucky to win four with this deck um it is a little sad that the game that went the best and there's white mana the game that went the best for us uh, was the one where... I mean, in terms of Necro Bloom landfall triggers, the game that went the best for us was the one where I forgot to hit record in the Telvin Extreme Late game. But, uh, yeah. We are dead. Hard to beat Lelia in general, and the Party Thrasher plus Lelia thing, and the uh, bad block like made it impossible. I mean... Could have still drawn removal, I guess, but yeah. I'm a little sad we didn't get to go off more with Landfall, because we did sort of build our deck around that, but at least we got Necro Bloom in play, and it, you know, it did stuff. Um, it's probably better in, like, a legit control deck. Like, I bet you can draft a deck in this format that's sort of like a Field of the Dead deck in cubes, where, like, you just take all the land, you just make sure you have your win condition, and then you take, like, all the lands and just a bunch of removal and stuff around it. And I bet that is the way to do it. Our deck was kind of being pulled in two different directions. But we did try out Necrobloom, and I think that was pretty fun.